Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we're going to be having some fun with feathers. So you can see in my viewport here, got a lot of really fun colorful feathers uh, that I made in Cinema 4D R17. So I'm going to be going over one of the big new, uh, well one of my favorite uh, features inside of the new version is the new pen tool. Uh, and I think it's actually better than the Illustrator version of the uh, their pen tool, uh, but I'll be using that. Uh, I'll be using uh, Feathers, and Feathers is actually part of the uh, Cinema 4D hair module. So if you haven't used it before, it's a lot of fun. It's actually very easy to uh, play around with and get going, but the main important part is uh, how to build a feather to actually make it look realistic. That's the tricky part. Uh, so we're going to be going over all the options and how uh, I feel like you can create a very good uh, uh, organic realistic feather uh, inside of Cinema 4D. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into our composition. All right, so let's go ahead and start a brand new scene. Uh, let me delete all of this stuff in here right now. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we're going to build a spline that is going to be uh, the base of our feather. Uh, so in R17 is a really cool brand new tool, if I can only find it. Create spline, there we go, still learning this stuff. Uh, so they have a new pen tool and it rivals uh, Illustrator's pen tool. So Illustrator's pen tool used to be ahead, but I feel like the new pen tool in Cinema 4D R17 is really, really nice. Uh, so you basically just click in your viewport you already have this like preview spline of what your spline is going to look like as you lay a second point. So I can click and drag and I got this uh, Bezier handles that you can drag around and all this stuff. Uh, so this is really nice. So you get this nice preview of where your next, uh, how your line or how your spline is going to continue with this little preview here. And if you want to get out of the pen tool, you just click escape. Uh, or if you want to close the path, you click escape. Uh, so then you can go and with the pen tool still activated, you can go and click on individual points and adjust their handles. Uh, so really, really cool, uh, the pen tool in R17. Uh, so basically what we're doing is just creating a curved spline uh, that we can have our feather kind of be built upon. So that's exactly what we're doing right now. And I think that looks pretty good. So we want this nice organic kind of curve uh, to start. And then what we're going to do to actually create feathers, we're going to go to simulate, we're going to go to hair objects and under hair objects, we have feathers, uh, feathers object here. So to apply featherish effects onto a spline, uh, you just simply drag your spline right underneath, make it a child of the feathers object. And if I zoom in here, let me actually go full screen into my perspective view, you can see that we have a bunch of like splines or strands that have been applied to our base spline that we uh, created here. So if I go into the interactive render region, you can see that this renders out uh, whatever you have with this uh, default hair material. So it's all brown and kind of looks kind of cruddy. Uh, but now inside of the feather object, we have all these options and stuff, but you'll see that uh, we actually don't have like a base for our feather and actually what that base is called is the rachis. Uh, so the rachis, uh, if I adjust this rachis radius, you can actually see that that's kind of spreading out these little strands of hair or barbs of, uh, not, uh, not hair, but uh, barbs of this feather. So these little, little uh, feathery strands are technically called barbs in uh, the feather object and then the uh, the actual uh, part that kind of connects to the bird or whatever is actually called the rachis. So the rachis we actually still need to build because there is no rachis right, uh, right yet. So uh, that's basically the rachis radius. What that does is kind of spreads apart the barbs uh, from the uh, bottom of the, uh, the base position, the starting position of our feather. Uh, and then from the top as well. And typically you wouldn't really move around these very much. Uh, but let's go ahead and just create our little uh, rachis here. Uh, and let's go and the way we're going to do this is uh, create a sweep object. 
And what we're going to do is sweep a circle along this spline. And instead of just creating a, a duplicating this spline, what we're going to do is just create an instance of that spline. So I had the spline selected and then chose a instance object. And what that'll do is create a spline instance and it's referencing our original spline. So we're going to use this spline and we're going to create we're going to use the circle spline and the spline instance, drag it underneath the sweep, and you can see that if I decrease the radius of my circle spline here, we now have our little rackus that we made with a sweep object. So we'll rename this rackus. Uh, and then we'll just uh, bring the end scale down to zero. And you can see that that kind of tapers off. And then I'll just apply like a basic material to that and there we go we got our rackus and the nice thing about making that uh, creating that spline instance is we can go into our spline here and this will uh, not only update the feather uh, barbs and all that stuff uh, but it'll actually update and be uh, changing where our rackus is because that's uh, an instance and it's referencing this original spline that we're now editing so very handy indeed. So let's go ahead and uh, start messing around with these feather options here, shall we? Let's go right in here. Uh, and a lot of this stuff is very straightforward. Uh, so number one, uh, you'll notice a difference between the amount of uh, barbs that you can see in our interactive render region and in our editor. And this is due to the fact that we have this editor level of, level of detail and you can kind of adjust this to kind of speed up your viewport or if you just want to see what this is going to look like uh, when it renders you can just keep this at 100% uh, but I like to just uh, have interactive render region going to actually view what's going on uh, so that is the uh, editor level of detail we also have the uh, we can generate hair or we can generate splines we're just going to stick with uh, hairs right now uh, and then segments is basically how much uh, detail is in your hair uh, segments. So how many segments is in your hair? So the more segments, the smoother the uh, spline will, or the smoother the hair will be. Uh, so if you actually start bending it and stuff, you won't get like chunky sharp edges. Uh, so if you adjust this uh, segments and you actually see this later, we have we don't have any uh, displacement right now, so you really can't see anything yet. Uh, the next is spacing. Uh, and we already messed around with this rackus radius and the top as well. Um, so you can actually go in here and say, okay, well, we just want a, like a one centimeter gap here, but I mean, it really doesn't matter all that much, uh, but that's what that does. Uh, the start and the end is actually where all of the barbs start and end on your spline. So you can see as I adjust the start, all of our barbs kind of are constrained to the very top of our uh, spline or if we just don't want any kind of gaps at all we just want our uh, little feathery barbs to start at the very start of our spline we can do that as well I'm just gonna leave that at 10 percent right now so uh, this next one uh, kind of determines how much spacing you have between each of these barbs it's very aptly named barb spacing uh, and typically you'll want to just leave this at a fairly low number uh, and then what I, nice thing about this and what one of the things that is really going to help sell a uh, the illusion of a organic feather is by uh, most of these options that have variation you want to add a little bit of variation just to give it a little bit more organic uh, organiciness is that a word I'm making it a word organiciness uh, so each of these options, you want it just a little bit. I mean, a little bit goes a long way. You can see that just a 0.4 centimeter really does a lot. So let's just actually do like a 0.1. And you can see that get, that gives just a little bit of uh, randomization, a little bit more organicness. Organicness is the word of the day today. Uh, so now we have, uh, so that was the barb spacing. And now we're going to do the barb length. Uh, so basically that's just the length of each of these barbs here and you can also adjust the variation on these as well so again a little bit goes a long way uh, we don't want to get too crazy with this but like a variation of like one 
should suffice pretty dang good. Uh, so let's keep that barb length at 45. Um, let's go ahead to uh, displacement here. And you'll notice as I adjust the displacement, nothing is happening. And that's because uh, displacement is basically uh, driven off of modifications of these options down here. So we got cross section and we have curve. So what the cross section does, I'm actually going to go to my four view here so we can get a little bit better uh, understanding of how or what's going on when we adjust each of these. So the cross section, I'm going to hold command and I'm going to create a new point on this spline editor. And you can see that what's going on is I'm creating a curve on the right side of our feather here. So you can see that this is basically adjusting a nice little curve in our feather. So we get this really nice uh, specular highlight action going on. Uh, we can do the same thing with this other side. And uh, you don't want these to be exactly the same because again, we're talking with organic uh, material and organic feather and nothing is going to be exactly uh, mirrored on each side of these feathers. So you can kind of uh, get have a little bit of an artistic license as far as um, where how, how these curves kind of are similar to one another or how much differences you have uh, between each of these sides. Uh, so you can see that this adds a really nice little nice arc curve using that cross section there. Uh, so the next is an actual curve. Uh, so again, if I go to uh, the, the curve spline editor, I'm just going to create a new uh, point by hitting the command key and just going to bring this point up and you can see that that is actually let me just zoom in here and you can see a little bit better pay attention to this side you can see that I'm creating uh, so the cross section kind of had an arc going up in the Y direction this is kinda or not in the Y but the the Z uh, and the curve is creating a curve in the Y direction so you can see if I create another spline here or another spline point here uh, we're getting a nice arc uh, going the other way and I can also kind of bring this point up on either side and kind of have it like that. So you can have a lot of fun with how your uh, how your barbs are kind of curved out uh, on your feather. Uh, so right now we're, it's looking pretty good. We get this really nice specular highlight. You can really get a sense of that depth uh, of this feather because of the arc settings or the arc uh, displacements that we set up with our cross section in our curve uh, and then I'm just going to go back to our displacement so remember the displacement tab we weren't really changing anything and that was because we had no displacement uh, from our cross section uh, or our curves so now we can actually go to our displacement and start messing around with this and basically what this is doing it's an overall uh, like strength control over that uh, the spline editor curve changes that we changed in our curve and our cross section. So you can see this is just kind of like overall strength uh, of everything here. Uh, so what you can actually do is go into our variation and adjust a little bit of variation. So again, just a little bit goes a long way. Uh, and let's just go to our uh, perspective view here. So just a little bit of variation there for the curve top and we can actually adjust the strength of the curve on the base of our, uh, the base of our feather. So typically, you'll have more curve on the base of a feather than you will at the curve uh, on the top. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I think that's true. <laughs> uh, but again, you can adjust the variation on these, uh, both of these as well. So I, I just choose like a one centimeter in that. Uh, again, just adds a little bit of that organic randomness uh, to our feather. Uh, let's see, and the displacement, uh, again, is the displacement of the... Uh, cross section there so you can adjust the overall strength there uh, and again adjust variation on your cross section so if I zoom in here you can see that that adds a little bit of variation there cool so that's uh, again that's a little bit too much if we do a little bit too much variation it kind of starts to look uh, a little bit like pillowy or, or just it doesn't it looks too frizzy to be a a real feather 
uh, unless you want one of those like feather fake feather boa things and that those are like really frizzy but we're not doing that uh, we're not making no pink boas but uh, so that is the displacement options here so again just a little very a little bit of variation goes a long way um, so the next thing is the rotation and that just kind of uh, this controls the rotation of all of our uh, feather barbs uh, we have the rotation step where we can get some really crazy stuff going on there uh, kind of looks like a DNA helix uh, but the one thing that uh, the one important uh, option here is the rachis rotation uh, and you can see that what this does is rotates individual barbs here so again if we adjust this a little bit and then have a little bit of barb rotation here so this is like rotation in the X and rotation in the Y and again I just like to give this just a little bit of rotation here just again to give it a little bit of uh, organic uh, a little bit more organicness uh, so um, actually for the rotations you probably want to go a little bit lower than one uh, percent so just a little bit like maybe half a degree uh, and that should be just enough maybe even a little bit less so just very very subtle uh, variations in all of these options here really add up uh, as you can see here is we're, we're not very uniform it looks very organic uh, and then our last thing that we can do uh, as far as the barbs go uh, and adding variation is the gaps here so what the gaps do does is if I increase the gap, nothing's going to happen. We actually need to uh, set a gap uh, width or height or whatever this uh, this is, the centimeter option here. And then we need to actually adjust the occurrence. So this is how often gaps will occur on our feather here. So you can see at an occurrence of 15, we have quite a few gaps. Uh, and then once you actually have some gaps, uh, applied via this occurrence you can adjust the variation on each of these gaps uh, so again uh, you just want a little bit uh, so that looks pretty good um, you just want maybe just a few more gaps in there uh, so again this is looking pretty good uh, but again our shape the profile of our uh, of our barbs are just totally uh, linear going up and down we actually need to adjust the shape of our uh, feather and that's uh, we can actually do that in our shape field here so we have again two spline editors like we had for the cross section and the curve and if we go ahead and again I'm going to uh, command yeah command click and create a new spline point and I'm just going to adjust the spline curve here and you can see that this is going to really uh, define the uh, how our sh uh, feather is going to look is based off of this spline right here. So I'm going to adjust uh, the end point over here, maybe create a fourth point, and let me whoop, let me zoom out here, and you can see that we're now getting the shape of a feather. And again, looking pretty organic. Uh, and again, uh, adding to the whole organic looking thing uh, is you can control both sides. So it's not an exact mirror unless you really want it to be. Uh, so again, I'm just going to create some more points on this side. And uh, you can see that what we're doing is basically creating the profile of our feather that we can see in both of these uh, two shape splanators here. So you can see that updating in our viewport so you have full control over how your feather profile kind of looks uh, so you can have a lot of fun with this and kind of create whatever kind of feather you want and there you go so again uh, you don't want to want them to have exact sides because again nothing in nature is perfect uh, so you just want a little bit of uh, some differences to add a little bit more character to some of these uh, feathers feel like feel like we're talking about like happy trees or something with Bob Ross but we're gonna make some happy feathers uh, and each one's gonna have their own little nice personality right didn't he say that about all the trees happy trees uh, but yeah so this this feather looks pretty happy don't you agree uh, so that's enough playing around with that so we got our good uh, feather shape 
uh, looking pretty good. Uh, and that's ba basically all the options in the feather object. Uh, the one thing we need to do now is adjust the hair material because uh, feathers really don't have this much specularity on them. Uh, but since we're, uh, let, we can just go to color and we're going to go to, uh, we'll actually go down to specular first. And I'm going to adjust the specular here. So we want a little bit of specular, uh, but just, we want to tone it down. We still want a sense of, uh, this nice little depth that's created by the arc of our feather. Uh, but this is just way, way too much. So what we're going to do is just bring down the strength of, uh, our first, a primary specular here and we'll bring the sharpness down to five so the strength uh, uh, the strength at five percent the sharpness at five percent so you can see uh, that we still have our secondary uh, specular going but you can see that we tone down the specular overall quite a bit uh, so for the secondary strength uh, we can leave this at 80 but let's bring the sharpness down to five and we can just give this nice kind of like matte uh, finish to our feather so that's looking pretty good. Just enough specular to get a sense that this is a curved, that all these barbs are kind of curved, and that when we actually put lights in here, uh, the specular, the slight specular will really play off of those lights uh, that will be added to our scene. Uh, so the next thing is we'll just adjust uh, the thickness here. We're going to change the tip from 0.1 centimeters to zero. So you can see that, that we now have very, very uh, where our barbs start thick and then just kind of taper off to nothing and actually our um, actually our barbs are fairly thick so let's actually just bring the root down to about 0.6 and you can see that we're starting to get a lot more gaps in here so let's go ahead and fill that in by adjusting our barb spacing on our feather object so instead of 0.4 let's do 0.2 and you can see that we kind of filled in uh, a lot of the gaps there uh, and then I think the gaps, these gaps are a little bit too big. So let's just, uh, number one, bring down the, uh, the gap centimeters and then adjust the variation uh, as well. So that's, I think that's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, so just a little bit looks good. Uh, so let's go back into our hair material. And uh, I don't like brown. Uh, brown's not very exciting. So let's actually go and in my example, I have a lot of bright colors and you can see down here. So let's, uh, let me just go ahead and show you how I changed the material. So if you didn't notice that when you, when you actually create a feathers object, there's already a default hair material applied to it. And this is default brown. Uh, and we can adjust uh, the color in this gradient right here. So we can go like this, uh, but one thing you'll notice is that uh, you're by default you're really stuck with uh, coloring the feather from the tip of the barb to the end of the barb as a gradient. Uh, but what if you wanted to actually have the gradient going up and down? Uh, so say you wanted brown at the bottom and green at the top. Uh, what we'd have to do is actually number one. Uh, not use this default color gradient here what we'd actually have to do is go into the texture and create a gradient and the one thing you'll notice that, that uh, once we create a gradient it's actually set in the right uh, 2d space uh, but we're actually not seeing the gradient going from top to bottom and we actually need to do one thing to our hair material uh, tag here and that is going to the tag, going to the tag settings, and we have this hair UVs. Uh, and if you actually check this out, uh, it's going to be very obvious what you need to do is once you uh, go to your hair view UVs, by default, it's set to symmetrical. Uh, we actually just need to change this and say, hey, hair material, we're actually using, we're actually creating a hair material for a feather. So we need to change the hair UV space uh, that will work best with a feather. So once I change that to feather, you'll see that uh, number one, if I go to my gradient, that's now okay. Uh, but we're actually in the wrong direction. So we're actually, I, I lied, we are in the wrong direction. But if we go to the V, there we go. Now we have uh, the black part of our gradient at the bottom, and it f gradually uh, gradates to white. Uh, so again, if I didn't have that hair UV setting, 
set correctly, you'll see the issue we would have ran into. So I actually didn't have that 2D, uh, that the type correct, but I needed to change it to feather anyways. Uh, so yeah. So now we can change this to, let's go and change this to yellow. Let's make this a very bright tropical bird feather. And uh, let's just have that bright orange and then we can, or bright yellow and then change this to an orangish kind of thing. And that looks pretty good. And you can adjust these knots to kind of have this applied uh, as you want them to. But you can see that even just having a gradient like this also adds some really nice uh, uh, depth. Uh, and you can get a sense of the form of the feather as it curves back, uh, as you can see with the, the spline. And again, you can always go into this spline and give it even more of a curve on this feather so we get even more a sense of depth. Uh, we can actually you know, adjust this so it's not completely linear up and down. Um, so again, and everything will update since we have that spline instance. Uh, so then how I created my little composition was I created, uh, number one, a few more hair materials with different uh, gradient colors. And then basically what I did was um, just kind of grouped my feather object and the rachis object, grouped them together, and I'll just rename this yellow feather. And then I just duplicated it. Let's change this to the purple feather. And then I already pre-made the uh, different hair material colors, so I just applied that. Uh, new hair material to the feather object. Let me just move this hair material over or this whole feather over uh, And then for each one of these you want to add a little bit of uh, Difference a little variation to each of these uh, Feathers again each of these feathers are Happy feathers and they all have their own individual personalities as Bob Ross would probably say uh, so again, I'm just going to change some of the uh, the how the spline is. I'm going to go into the feathers object and uh, again uh, just kind of adjust a lot of these things in here. Uh, just the spacing a little bit, maybe. Um, can adjust the curve base, maybe not have that as curved. Adjust the variation on these, uh, the rotation perhaps. And then the biggie is, of course, adjusting uh, the uh, the shape of each of these uh, feathers here. So this is going to give each of these a lot of different character and uh, really help sell the fact that these are just completely different uh, feathers. And they all have their own differences. Everyone's a special little feather. Um, so yeah, and then what I did was just kind of duplicate this a couple more times. I'm just going to kind of blow through uh, this part. So just hair feather. I can't spell feather. Uh, and then apply a red material to this guy. Move him over. Uh, and then just very quickly, I'm just going to adjust um, the shape of this. Uh, there we go. Uh, maybe adjust the spline just very quickly. Cool. Uh, and then let's just do one more. And this will be the uh, teal feather. Again, very tropical. It might be the end of summer, but hey, let's let's keep it nice and tropical inside of Cinema 4D. Uh, again, we can adjust the spline a little bit. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. So then what I did was just to create my composition, uh, I just got a little bit creative with number one, uh, laying these out in 3d space, uh, and kind of rotating these, uh, feathers around. So one, they're kind of overlapping one another, maybe scaling one of them up. Uh, and the big thing here will be to, uh, add some lights. Because uh, right now, you can see as I'm layering these guys, let me turn this yellow feather upside down. 
like so. Cool, so that's looking pretty good. Where's our teal? Where's our teal? Bring our teal back. Let's put that there. So everything's layered in Z space. Uh, and you can see that there's no uh, shadows on here because of course we have no lights. Uh, so let's go ahead and change that really quick. Let's go ahead and add light to our scene. And let's move this light out. Uh, so we're getting a little bit of diffuse shading. Uh, and actually, I think our red, no, no, okay. I thought we were overlapping a little bit. I think this feather might be overlapping something else. Okay, so we have our uh, diffuse shading from the shadow, but again, or from the light, but again, no shadow because we, of course, haven't set any shadows yet. Uh, and uh, the, your best option is probably going to be the uh, shadow map soft uh, because area is really going to take a long time to render. So keep that in mind. Uh, so I'm just going to turn on shadow map soft and already you can see that that really adds a lot of nice uh, depth uh, by adding shadows and those shadows uh, are going to be cast on each of our little strands or our little barbs of our feathers. Um, and right now there's not a whole lot of detail because of the fact that our shadow map resolution is very low. Uh, so you can see uh, if I bring my uh, light up can see especially on the purple feather and a little bit here we get this a very soft shadow what we can do is uh, increase the shadow map resolution so jack this up to maybe a thousand and you can see we're getting a lot more detail a lot more sharpness on our soft shadow uh, so again what we can do is go ahead and create another light and just kind of move it over here and maybe turn down the intensity. We'll turn down the intensity of our first light as well. Uh, and let's let's go to our first light, and let's create a uh, give this a realistic fall off uh, right now. So now we have this fall off, and so now we're getting a little bit uneven diffuse. Uh, light casting on this so we get more sense of uh, the depth of our feathers and then the last thing we want to do is actually go in uh, and create a background so we'll just create a plane just so we have something to actually cast our shadows onto uh, let's just orient this in the positive Z scale this sucker up uh, and place a white material on the back here and what I did was uh, for the background I just used a white color and just increased the luminance a little bit and then just gave it a little bit of uh, a very big specular highlight uh, so you can actually see two shadows showing up um, from this and one is because of our uh, second light so let's actually bring this light out here and let's change this to a lower, uh, let's change the shadow on our second light to a lesser, more soft shadow. Uh, and on our first light, let's change the color of our shadow to maybe something bluish. Uh, so it looks a little bit more interesting. Let's make maybe make it like a brighter blue, like so. And so right there, we got some really nice shading happening. Let's actually increase, uh, let's bring this down, increase the intensity, and adjust the position of our light. So that's looking pretty good. Um, let's see, for our second light, bring down the shadow. And now I'm just kind of doing annoying tweaky things. Uh, but you kind of get the point. Uh, basically what I wanted to convey in this tutorial was number one, uh, how to uh, create feathers and number two, how to make those feathers happy. <laughs> uh, so I hopefully kind of conveyed how to do both those things. Uh, and again, you can adjust the, the composition of these feathers and change the different colors of feathers and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, feathers are really fun in uh, Cinema 4D. Um, to actually render them out though, uh, you could, uh, to render out the alpha, you actually need to go into your multipass and what you'll need to do is add a, 
uh, post effect. Where is it? Yeah, post effects here. And what that will do is create a, you'll render out a pass with just your hair or just your, uh, just your feathers action going on there. So just keep that in mind uh, when you actually go to render. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That is how to create a fun, colorful uh, feather composition inside of Cinema 4D. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I always appreciate your guys' views, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.